Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to the Drawing for Adults class. This class is offered as a partnership between the Ann Arbor District Library and the Ann Arbor Art Center. My name is Peyton Cook, and I teach these classes on Sundays normally at the library, but in these times, we're doing these on uh, the video So instead. So we are doing a watercolor and ink series where we're talking about architecture this week. If you don't have watercolors um, or ink pens, I really like this little set. It's a travel set by Windsor & Newton, um, but any watercolors will be great. Um, um, and ink pens, I also really like these Pigma Micron pens. That's what I prefer to use when doing any kind of ink line work um, because there's a variety of line widths. So like I said, we're going to be talking about architecture today using watercolor ink. So I hope you enjoy today's lesson. We're thinking about drawing architecture, we have to consider um, perspective. So we have one point perspective, we have two point perspective, and when we're doing landscapes, which we'll talk about next week, uh, we have something called atmospheric perspective, which is absolutely still relevant when drawing um, or painting a, uh, architecture. Um, it basically just means that any kind of, you know, if you, especially if you had like a cityscape, anything that's in the background, you should have cooler colors. In the foreground, you would have warmer colors, more detail, more saturation. Um, all of that and that just helps give the illusion that there's 3d depth right there that it's even though it's a 2d surface on paper that you are representing a 3d space so that's what perspective is is there to help us with so we also have one point and two point perspective now depending on what kind of imagery um, that you're going to be referencing you may just need to really focus on one or the other or maybe not even either so i'm gonna go more into depth on one point perspective i'll probably do another talk on two point perspective at some point soon um, but i'm also going to just briefly go over um, both okay so I want to make sure that I am clear as to at least the difference between the two um, as well as some of the terminology that would be used when referring to one and two point perspective so one point perspective is a linear perspective where there's just one vanishing point where the lines are converging so the drawing that I'm going to be doing today is a one point perspective piece. I think this is a great starting point if you aren't familiar with one point perspective or two point or three point, um, then I would start with one point. It's just kind of, it's the stepping stone. It's the first way to start figuring this out. And this is something that a lot of artists for um, centuries have been using in their art. And so if we look here, um, this is Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper, we can see these, um, this one point perspective and the vanishing point is right at the center of the painting, which is right at um, the head of Jesus. So um, the other lines that you can kind of see, they, they all lead to that point just like this shows. Okay, this is a little bit of a wonky piece, um, with Vincent Van Gogh's bedroom painting uh, that he painted in 1889, but you can still see some converging lines, these diagonal lines that all lead back to the back of the bedroom. Okay, Peter Max, here's another example, all those converging lines leading to the center of the earth. This piece is one of the, um, I think, real like obvious paintings, I guess, in art history, um, just because you can see all of those lines leading it back to, um, towards the back center of the painting. So I mentioned, um, uh, uh, well, I mentioned that there's a bunch of diagonal lines, but those all have words. So let's just start with that horizon line. So the horizon line is a line where the sky meets the ground or water or whatever it is. Uh, your vanishing point is the point that's off into the distance where all of your lines converge. So that's where all of those diagonal lines or whatever they are, they all meet to that vanishing point. Now that's different from the vantage point. We are viewing this uh, seeing this setting, this space um, from a certain point where I'm standing, and that's the vantage point, okay, the point where I'm seeing this. Um, the ground plane is the re region under the horizon line, 
and the orthogonal lines are all the lines that are directed towards the vanishing point. So a lot of times we call these converging lines, um, but these are called orthogonals. So here's another example of um, what we just talked about, um, but I want to bring up a couple different terms. So there again, at the top center, we have the vanishing point, um, the horizon line, uh, and then we have the orthogonals that I just talked about, which are those converging diagonals, and there's the transversals. So you'll notice that the transversals are those horizontal lines, and closer to the bottom of the page, we see the uh, lines, the space between the transversals are a little bit larger than the space between them as they go towards the vanishing point. Because if you think of this, you are in real life, um, they would of course be getting, um, they wouldn't be actually getting smaller, but from that vantage point where you're seeing it, it appears as if they are, there's a much more narrow space between each transversal. So here's an example where we see, again, the vanishing point as well as the horizon line, and then you can recognize the place where we have the orthogonals as well as the transversals in this image. Okay, so what I would recommend doing is going ahead and setting it up so that you can practice drawing a few cubes. So these cubes would be similar to if you were drawing, say, a, a building um, in a city or something um, in a one-point perspective. So just first just draw a bunch of uh, squares all over your paper and then you can draw your vanishing point somewhere on the horizon line. So your horizon line is that straight horizontal line going across your page and then put the dot for the vanishing point somewhere along that line. It does not have to be in the center, it can be anywhere. And then from there, you're just gonna grab a ruler and every corner of the square, you're going to connect the corner to the vanishing point and draw a line connecting those. Um, and then you'll have, um, then you can cut it off so that it's um, just boxed so that it doesn't actually all have one point going. Um, and you would just draw a vertical line that is parallel with the uh, sides of the square to make it so it's cut off into a box. So. Um, we are going to go ahead and jump into two point perspective now. Okay, so now that we're moving into two point perspective, I just want to reiterate what I said at the beginning in that we're going to focus more on one point perspective. So what I'm going to show you real quick here is actually just a website um, that I recommend looking at more into um, more in depth. And it's from the virtual instructor, and I enjoy these videos. Um, I share them a lot in our other Sunday drawing classes, um, and I think these are really helpful. Um, I should say, when we meet in person, I often will share these videos. Um, and there's a lot of really great beginner videos that you don't have to subscribe to. They are um, there's some free ones, there are some paid ones, but there's a lot of free ones available as well. So I want you to uh, take a look at that video if you're interested in finding out some more information about uh, Two Point Perspective. Um, and the site itself has plenty of other information. So um, if you just scroll down, you can see some different um info here about two-point perspective. So this is how it works in a nutshell. Love this. So we have our horizon line and basically instead of having one vanishing point is um, two vanishing points. So that's really the only difference. Once you have your vanishing points established on your horizon line, uh, you can go ahead and draw the uh, building. So putting those lines down, that vertical line down, um, we'll show kind of the corner there of the building. And then from there, just establishing where the building ends um, on the sides there. So you can see how that looks there. Okay. So then, um, you know, anything that's below the horizon line, you can kind of see the way that they're doing it. It's the same thing. It's just those, the, um, the 
lines that are going to be um, what would normally be a horizontal line, of course, is becoming more of a diagonal line because those corners are leading to the vanishing points. So this is exactly the same little process we just did with a one point perspective of drawing cubes. So that's how I would practice this again is just practice drawing cubes in two point perspective. So um, this is gonna be a great way to learn this process. So just draw the vertical line and then basically from there decide how wide you want your cubes to be and then just connect the little corners of that first line to your second and third lines and connect it to the vanishing point. So here we see more of a scene where we have the buildings, um, now those windows, you'll see those are also still going to the tops of the windows, those, those lines that are diagonal um, are also leading to the vanishing points. Okay. So again, this site is very, very helpful for looking at um, one point and two point perspective. Um, they also have some info about 3D perspective if you wanted to get into that. But this is just a little info about how to get started with that. Uh, with that said, that doesn't mean that you even really have to use one point or two point perspective for today's project. Um, we're going to talk a lot about keeping everything pretty loose, so I'd encourage you to do that. So this is the end result of my little architecture sketch here um, that I did today. And what you're going to want to do is probably start with actually a light sketch. Now you're going to see me here putting in a little bit of background color um, just to kind of map out the space a little bit before starting the sketch. You are absolutely welcome to do that part, uh, do that first as well if you would like. Um, so now you see me adding more of the details of the sketch in with pencil here. So um, it's really up to you how you want to start it. Um, as long as whatever you're using to sketch isn't going to um, bleed or change or anything, then it should be okay. Um, and also, I don't recommend sketching anything out in pencil that you don't intend on applying ink on top. Otherwise, your pencil lines will still be very apparent, um, which because because watercolor paint is fairly transparent. So, you know, it's it's not going to cover up any of your pencil lines, really. So you want to make sure if you have those pencil lines that you're okay if they are exposed or you're okay if they are um, or you, you intend on covering them up with ink anyway. So I am just really loosely now blocking in the watercolor colors. So you can see I'm not really being that detailed here. Um, I'm going to end up adding a lot more detail in with my ink pens. Um, I can always come back with a detail brush if I want to. But for the most part, I'm blocking in colors, layering them and, um, you know, blending them out and everything. So uh, one thing that, you know, isn't really obvious through this process um, is drying time. So, you know, for a lot of this, what, you know, what has a minute maybe <laughs> um, passed since starting this, um, this would really, if you were doing this with actual watercolors, you would want to let several of these layers dry before adding on another color. So anytime you see me painting on top of another color I've already applied, know that if you were doing this, you would want that previous color to be fully dry. So this is a process of really letting your paint dry, um, letting it do what paint does when it dries, which is just really beautiful when it comes to watercolors, letting it be a little bit splotchy if you want. You can still tell I don't have a lot of detail with the colors. I will add more later. Um, and if you're using a waterproof ink pen, meaning that if you apply water on top of the ink pen, it won't bleed or um, dissolve the ink at all, it'll just still remain, then, uh, which is what I would recommend doing, such as the Pigmo Icron pens, there are other pens that will do that as well, um, but that will give you the option to go back and add more ink, I mean, excuse me, add more watercolor after you've already added in a decent amount of ink. So, that's what I like to do. I 
could absolutely have done this where I did all watercolor first um, or I did all of the ink first and then added watercolor um, and that would be fine or do all the watercolor first and then add ink but I kind of prefer to do a little bit of both kind of at the same time so do a little bit of watercolor then go back to ink then do a little bit of uh, watercolor and then go back to ink and just so forth adding those details figuring out how much detail I really want to get so um, you know this is something that when you're deciding how loose you want to get this might also just depend on your perspective right so you can see this is a one point perspective not a two point perspective piece um, you know I didn't really talk about that all again when applying this because I already mentioned uh, one point and two point perspective but when you do a sketch which I would definitely recommend doing a sketch first of whatever you plan on drawing you know that's the that's the time to really work out um, some of the kinks in terms of perspective of really figuring out okay this part needs to be more angled down this part needs to be closer together whatever it is um, those adjustments that you would need to make to make sure it makes sense you would want to do that in your sketch before um, especially before inking it once it's in ink it's kind of hard to press undo you know, with that said, you absolutely don't have to go through the whole one point, two point perspective to do this project. Um, if you are looking at this and you're feeling like, hey, I think that's a little off. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, I am keeping this pretty loose. I did not, um, because I'm doing this digitally, I can get some stuff pretty straight, but it's kind of hard to lay a ruler on top um, so of my screen. So everything is definitely um, more, much more approximate here, um, but I am working on trying to get some level of detail and some level of, I guess, realism and really representing the space that I'm painting here, which is this um, little photograph that I took you know, when I was in Italy last summer. And, um, you know, so I would say do the level of realism that you're comfortable with. If you want to get a lot of details in there, then go for it. If you want to keep it really loose and do more of a shaky, agitated line, which is what I'm doing, then go for it. It's it's really however you want to go about it. Um, you know, bring as much um, interest as you can with the tools that you have. So as you can see, I'm doing that now. I'm adding a lot more contrast back in with the watercolor paint. So pick a cool photo that maybe you took that's a special place, maybe you wish you were traveling to right now but can't currently, um, and decide to to make a little um, painting to, to represent that space and that feeling that you remember feeling when you were there. So this is a great way to document um, a travel experience or a uh, any kind of special place that, that's important to you. So hope you enjoy doing this project and that you are starting to really get a better grasp on watercolor and ink and just what those two uh, mediums look like when used together in one painting. So I hope you will tune in with us next time.